So, okay, oh, just having some technical issues today. Um, so I'm trying to migrate from, um, you know, my personal page to going to a um, more page for the weekly seven. But anyways, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Really glad to have you guys. Uh, thank you for joining me every week here on Ugun Weekly 7. Um, so I've got seven topics for you and we can discuss today i hope everyone is doing well how's everyone doing with the ramadan share your comments share the live feed so we can get a more dynamic engagement and we can get more people here so how's everyone going how are you doing hello 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 let's see here who do we have in the house oh i don't have so I see comments here. Okay, so let me see. Oh, hello, Mahat, how's it going? Hi, Sabut, Yasmin, I'm assuming your name is Yasmin. Okay, so let's just get into what we have um, going on this week, hello. Yes, mean. All right. So first we have Burundi kicking out who representative, which is really interesting that they're kicking out World Health Organization representative as they are dealing with a pandemic for the COVID-19. It's not likely really that they have a plan also. Uh, from what I've been reading, it is that they are relying on um, what do we call this? A divine favoritism. Apparently, God loves Burundi and will save Burundi from the coronavirus. It's really interesting also that they're having an election here not too soon on May 20th. And it seems very likely that people will not be able to make it to the polls. So I'm sensing some sketchiness here. All right, so they're kicking out who representative. They don't really have a pandemic plan. Um, they're urging people to just go on with life as usual. But at the same time, people are not really expected to go to the polls to vote on May 20th. So yeah, we have a lot of things going on in Burundi. But what do you guys think about them kicking out the World Health Organization and calling them persona non grata, which basically means that they're not important or unacceptable and then they need to leave the country immediately. I thought that was very interesting and sketchy at the same time, because what is the expectation? Where is the plan? What is what is going on? And the idea that, and the idea that Burundi, um, God loves Burundi, is just a way to put like a cloak over the people's eyes and to like pacify them. And it seems very insulting, you know, to people's like intellect, right? It's like, hey, we don't have a plan at all, you know. So, and we're gonna kick out the people who have some knowledge to potentially assist us. Apparently, the health minister. Um, wanting them out because he said that they were interfering um their reach was just too far and they were interfering too much abdul said how are you welcome welcome so the topic is a lot of topics right so on the weekly seven we try to hit seven main topics of the week um that really gave you know raised my eyebrow and it's like what is going on and it just seemed very intriguing and interesting to me and that i would like to share with you guys so the WHO representatives being kicked out from Burundi and Burundi having a pandemic like the rest of the world is dealing with, but absolutely not having a plan and also having an election here soon. 
sketchy business, sketchy business. Anyways, speaking about sketchy business, right? During this um, COVID-19 situation, there seems to be romance scams on the rise, right? So we're talking to each other more on the internet and, you know, people are, you know, locked down in their homes. Some people are single and, you know, they're seeking some sort of human engagement on the internet, like we all do, right? Um, but this one seems to be in these dire times of the COVID-19 and people are developing emotional attachment to other people because of, um, you know, being lonely, I guess, right? But there seems to be a rise in romance scams and the scams here is like when you formulate an emotional attachment to people and then request money from them, right? So there is all of that going on right now during coronavirus. I don't know really if it's exasperated. Like now that I think about it, I do actually think it is exasperated because of the fact that people are locked down and because some people who are single and living alone don't have other human engagement. Um, so they may be particularly susceptible, right? Uh, or story that I read was about a woman um, in England and she was scammed by this, um, you know, no offense to my Nigerian friends, a Nigerian guy in Nigeria. And apparently they're called a 419 scammers because that's a section of a law um, against like these kind of things. So 419 scammers. And basically as they first formulate some sort of an emotional attachment to a person. And then after that, they um, ask for money and say they have some emergency. So, and the emergency is usually some catastrophic thing happened to one of their family members or they got into some sort of accident. And it just seems, you know, it just seems um, very like, very um, calculated, right? So it's a calculator. So it's the emotional development, the attachment, and then, hey, you, person who cares about me, I've gotten myself into some trouble and I need some help and I could really use your help. Right. Um, so let's see here. Some of the comments. Um, Hassan says <laughs> Burundi is led by a delusional president who used to sing in the choir of his local church. OK, so no hating on choir music. OK, I happen to love choir a lot. But um you know, the guy loves his church and everything like that. And he says, you know, God loves Burundi, but I don't know if that's a really a health strategy or a political, like a legitimate political strategy, right? Hello, Habon. How are you? Welcome. Abdul, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome. So how's it going? Glad to have you here. Glad to see you guys. Speaking of crazy things on the internet, right? And I love the internet, to be honest. The internet is definitely my playground. It is my favorite place to hang out, right? Is, is that sad? I don't know. I just find it intriguing. Um, it gives you more opportunity to meet more people. But I feel like everyone should have a um, some sort of goal or an objective, right, for um, being on the internet. Is it just to hang out? Is it just to, you know, engage, like, to hang out, to engage with other people? Is it to learn, you know, to receive education? Is it to get inspiration and just take everything, you know, with a grain of salt, right? Take everything, not 100%, like listen, evaluate it based on what you already know, and then just decide what you're going to do with that information. Are you going to act upon it? Is it actually valuable? Does it fit your life, right? Because it's not a one size fit all. So I've been, you know, on the internet now, I would say I'm on social media, especially for about, oh, 2008, what is that, 12 years? And through those 12 years, you know, I've also grown as a person and it's, it's just important to like what I'm, what I do anyways, for me, it's important to see what my objective is, what's my purpose and how can I best utilize, um, you know, the technology that we have available to us. All right. So Bando, romance scams have been going on since the beginning of humanity. <laughs> That's true. I bet, right? People, um, you know, it's just human. I don't want to say that it's scamming is human nature, but like that idea of wanting to connect with other human beings is 
definitely human nature. And um, there seems to be once you know that connection is formed, people who are nefarious and not so nice say, "Hmm, what can I get out of this person?" So. As we are human beings, I can imagine that romance scams have been going on since the beginning of humanity. It's just that now we have more avenues. Um, Abdul Kafi says, "Rise in romance scams, gabihi waha kuhayan wanka maasha i qawa adna gora i marin an." And uh, you know, I thought I was better in Somali than this. I think I need someone in because I don't know what you mean. I'm assuming how I is some sort of mama or saying that has a deeper meaning and some you know wisdom, right? But anyway, speaking of the internet and speaking of people, um, or speaking of people <laughs> utilizing the uh, internet, we have a lady who is trying to get ahead of, you know, these romance scams and who's uh, trying to get ahead of all of this and saying like, hey, um, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and any guy who messaged me, I am going to just request some money from him, right? So there's this guy who messaged this lady and um, basically said, hey, send $25 for a response. So what do you guys think about that? So instead of like responding directly, right? Instead of, re <laughs> instead of responding directly, she's like, send me $25 for a response. And then she kept upping the price. She kept saying, send $50 for a response. And you know, because sometimes people message me unwantedly, I have thought about doing that. But then Han is city, oh my gosh, somebody's gonna post on there, Fra is looking for money. <laughs> If Fra is begging me in the DMs for money, oh my gosh, you know? So as a joke, I thought about doing it, but then I thought better. <laughs> Habon Ahmed, last December, a guy contacted me on Facebook. We chatted quite a while. Then we sent videos showing some jewelry, dollars, shoes. And then he said to me, we are going to pack it and send you a parcel. So please send $100 to a Kenyan number as the number uh, owner is working for our airline. That is always the case, right? Send money for me to um, send this gift to you or send money for me to be able to do this for you. And it's like... But I didn't ask you to do that for me. So this smells of a scam. Abdul said, I had no cool tafsiri. So, you know, maybe I'll take you up on the offer because, you know, it seems like a very interesting uh, mama and I would really like to learn more about it. So, you know, let's definitely do that. <laughs> So, um, how about that is hilarious. You know, I um, sometimes get messages from people and they use pictures of other people that I've seen on the intersphere, right? And I'm like, but you're not so-and-so. Like, why are you using his picture? So I just block because I think it's absurd to use other people's fish, um, what do you call it, pictures to catfish other people. By the way, have you ever been catfished? I have been catfished. I have been hatfished and teeth fished. So hatfish is when a guy puts a hat on every picture to disguise the fact that he is bald. And teeth fish is when a guy, because I'm using my example, doesn't smile widely in pictures because, um, you know, he knows that if I have sensitive about teeth and he doesn't want to, you know, ruin his chances before he gets it. So I have definitely been hat fished and teeth fished. People, don't do it, okay? Don't do it. It is deceitful and being deceitful is not nice at all. Absolutely. Okay. So Abdul Dahir, depends on the response there. What sort of response warrants a hundred bucks? Any response, she's saying, you know, if you want me to talk back to you, send some money. Hadikala. That's basically what she said. 
Now on some serious stuff, right? And some serious, serious stuff. I heard them hallie rather than I can say I'm not going to add no to say so. I thought this story was like super interesting. Kenyan Defense Forces plan to leave Somalia by December 2021, actually. Right? The plan was from 2011 to 2020. But now they're expected to exit in December of 2021. And one of the, they've established some eight pillars of when it's good to leave Somalia and to let, you know, Somali National Army uh, do the job that AMISOM or Kenya Defense Forces as well is doing right now. And one of the first pillars is that it involves some reforms in the Somali National Army and enabling the country's security forces to lead operations towards sustainable peace. I, I feel some type of way about this, you know, and it hurts me. As you know, as a Somali person from Somalia, right? It, it hurts me that this is the state that, um, you know, that things are, right? The state that we're in. But sometimes people need some help. Sometimes nations need help. And charity starts at home. And, you know, even though there is some interesting history, right, between Kenya and Kenya and Somalia and Kenya and Ethiopia and things actually going on right now with the maritime dispute, um, getting help from our neighbors may not be the worst thing that could possibly happen, right? All of these, um, you know, these reforms, right? These reforms um, sound good on paper, you know what I mean? Kind of sound good on paper. But at the same time, for me, like as a Somali, it, it seems very, you know, patronizing and infantilizing, you know, of a nation. And it hurts that this is the position that, you know, we're in. It, it, it really hurts, right? I wouldn't be here, obviously, right now here in the United States. Maybe I would have come by choice, you know, to get educated. I never would have had to leave. But we are where we are right now. One of their pillars is creating a stable, peaceful, and prosperous Jubaland. And um, instead of a place ridden, you know, according to the Kenya defense, uh, ridden with al-Shabaab. And it seems, right, and it seems that, um, you know, that I have a vested interest in um, Kismayo or Jubaland, right? So KDF has to leave Somalia, Hassan says, they have turned Kismayo into a business. Yeah. And it's just very unfortunate, right? So it's very unfortunate. Um, you know, there is this uh, saying, I've never, I don't know the who said it. I, it's unknown to me, but I saw it somewhere and it said, um, make money when there's blood on the streets. Basically meaning that people take advantage of when situations are dire and when countries are at war and when there is a civil unrest and a civil war in a country and a country is not as stable as it could be, it's a great opportunity in quotations because it's very unethical um, to make money, to take advantage of um, the fact that, you know, people are in a dire state right now. And it, you know, something like that is occurring right now. So there's there's a lot of things happening. Uh, KDF is going to leave, apparently. Um, you know, who who knows? Uh, we might hear something else, right? Later on. Who knows? So what do you guys think? There's all of this really bad blood. There is um, there's that history, you know, between Kenya and Somalia um, and our other neighbors, right? Um, I think about these things and I try to look at the bigger picture and I'm like, you know, what is like the best avenue? What is the um, what is the bigger picture? What is what we need to do right now? Temporarily is this, you know, overall, it feels bad. It, it feels, you know, not good. Haban is still on the scammers and she said scammers could reach you on all access of internet including Gmail, WhatsApp, FB, LinkedIn. Please be vigilant and never send any money. I'm so glad that you mentioned that cuz that is just that is the main point. Never send any money. Now, have I ever sent money to people? 
I have, you know, if somebody tells me, hey, if I, um, I'm short on this and could you help me out? I feel that sometimes, you know, we can't help people out. And, you know, in my situation, really, it wasn't like a romance scam or something like that. But it was people that I met on the Internet who've basically told me their life story, who I've become, you know, friends or acquaintances, some some sort of friendship formed out of, you know, our persistent interactions. So there is that, you know, feeling of, um, hey, I have it and you need it. So here you go, you know. And if they're scamming me, then shame on them. Um, but I hope, you know, that they're genuine. But yeah, I have. I have sent money. Have you ever sent money to people that you've met on the internet? And you're absolutely right, Habon. They could be reaching you anywhere, anywhere. The beauty of the internet and the um, negative of the internet is just that, right? It's just that. that I, the way that we're connected, it also, like, crime also grows along with that, right? So we, you know, we're utilizing the internet, and hopefully a lot of us are utilizing it for good, right? Like I said, for entertainment or for education or for information or just to engage with other human beings because human beings are social creatures, and we like engaging with other people. It just it gives us, you know, pleasure. Right. So um, but as we're using it for good, there's definitely those who are using it for bad. And the more potential it has to be used for good, the more potential it has to be used for bad as well. So we're in this place. Right. And we just have to um, be cognizant of that instead of ignoring it and instead of um, assuming that all people use the internet for the correct intentions, which I've <laughs> naively, right? I have been in that position where I've always thought, you know, because I wouldn't go out of my way to do anyone wrong. I would basically think to myself, like, you know, nobody, nobody would like, you know, try to cheat me or nobody would like do that. I wouldn't do that. So I don't expect anybody else to do that. And now I realize that's a really naive way to look at the world. Oh, thank God for growth. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Hassan says, Kenya and Ethiopia see Somalia as a strategic threat. An unstable Somalia is an advantage to both nations. What happened to the doctrine of immediate neighbors not having troops in Somalia? You know, you really touch on a point right there. And this is, you know, the point where a lot of us are saying this feels bad. This is not ideal for Somalia. What can be done, right? And there is this really bad blood over many, many, many years between those neighboring countries of ours and Somalia. So, and we do have to look at what their, you know, strategic or what their, what their, intentions are is i think it's fair to ask these questions and um not having troops in neighboring countries that would be the most ideal situation you know very unfortunate hey ha <laughs> Golis. What is Golis, by the way? Golis scammer. What is Golis scammer? I'm a little confused here. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. I'm going to have to see. Hey, Golis scammer, it's going to happen somewhere. Like I said, the more potential for good, the more potential for bad. 
seems like the topic, main topic, <laughs> happens to be scamming galore. All right, moving on to the next topic, also Somalia Kusesa, right? Um, so I've been reading about this lady, Sylvia Romano, who was basically um, captured by um, extremists and held captive for 18 months. So she was held captive for 18 months, and she was recently released, and she claims that she converted to Islam out of her own will. So here's the question, right? When when somebody has been held captive for so long, um, you know, first thing I think is like, you know, they feel sympathetic towards their captors. I'm thinking of Stockholm Syndrome. And after investigating Stockholm Syndrome, I'm also thinking like, whoa, the origins of Stockholm Syndrome are kind of sketchy. So basically in Stockholm, Sweden in 1973, these bank robbers held a bank hostage and like four of the employees for like five days, okay? During those five days, the employees and they felt um, basically compassion and empathy for the bank robbers who were holding them hostage. And a psychiatrist that was there, a psychologist that was there basically said that this is some sort of a psychological ailment and some sort of survival mechanism where the person, the captive, feels some sort of positive emotions towards the captors because maybe the captors have shown them some kindness, like maybe not killing them. So now they feel warm and friendly to them. And I can't see, even though the um, there are some sketchy origins of the Stockholm Syndrome. Um, one of the bank employees who was held captive says she did not feel positive about the police and she actually felt more positive to the bank robbers and aligned herself with them more. And the psychiatrist, a male, um, then basically um, discredited whatever she was saying and said, you don't know what you're thinking or doing, which sounds a lot like mansplaining. But at the defense of the psychiatrist, or psychologist <laughs> at his defense is it reasonable to think that someone might behave in a way that they not they wouldn't otherwise based on the circumstances that they found themselves in normally you wouldn't feel positive about cap your captors you wouldn't feel positive about the people who have kidnapped you you know you wouldn't align yourself willingly with their doctrine or their ideology because they're doing something wrong they're holding you against your will so for me i, I I'm suspicious of Sylvia Romano saying she converted to Islam out of her own will. I'm saying, are you really for sure? Or are you somebody who's been psychologically broke down after 18 months of captivity and not having any contact with your own, uh, with your people, with other human beings other than your captors? And do you misconstrue their behavior towards you as kindness when kindness would have been not capturing you, holding you against your will in the first place? So what do you guys think? Do you think she converted out of her own accord? Do you think that she is experiencing um, shell shock and um, Stockholm syndrome? Or do you think it's genuine? Oh, Golis is telecommunications. Hard there. Uh, I guess, you know, I'm not familiar, Habon, with all of the telecommunication uh, businesses. Um, in you know Somalia, I I understand that there is a lot of uh, monopoly in terms of business you know going on in Somalia. So the most recognizable one, no, but that's the most recognizable one, is the other one. And I personally, the <laughs> Somalia, last July, that's the first thing I did. I bought a SIM card from you know the big one because that's where I could find everywhere. A friend bought it for me, but. I knew that that's what was around everywhere, and that was the most accessible. So Silvio Romano, so now she's back in Italy, right? And she was wearing this huge, like, gambis. She was wearing this huge uh, jilbab, um, which was interesting to me, right? <laughs> you can imagine that something like that would be interesting to me, just because, you know? All right. So... What another thing, uh, that this uh, whole week, 
um, were discussing. And I love Somali social media. I just really love it. I love it. all these people that come together on that and we talk about all of these things from politics to like culture and linguistics. And linguistics actually is a huge fan favorite of mine. But anyways, this week there was this topic that about the school um, in Somaliland sends a young lady named Rahma to TCU. And TCU happens to stand for Texas Christian University. And, you know, it's a fact that most um, institutions of knowledge, you know, in the United States were typically founded by uh, the church or, you know, Christians, right? And with the idea, right, with the base ideological views and values of, you know, Christianity as a religion. But as time went on, it became obviously more and more about the academics and people of all walks of lives and creeds do attend those universities, whether they have Christian in the name or Jewish in the name or Pentecostal in the name or not, right? It's an institution of knowledge and you don't necessarily have to be Christian to attend it. However, there was this idea that this poor girl was going to be um, Christianized or she was gonna be made galo. And there was all of this uproar. And I did some digging and I thought to myself, but Abarsa sent two boys there not too long ago and there wasn't that uproar there wasn't that oh wala ilmihana wala galenaya because we had a job at the current time i got christian right people were happy that these young men were getting the opportunity to study abroad and give back to their families and their community it's a great opportunity and as a woman you know i took this very um i was offended and it was upsetting to me because it was, I saw this young lady who worked so hard to get to the position that she's in and people are minimizing her intellect and saying, oh, like she has no brains, which obviously she does. She's a very smart girl. So we have these kind of things, right? Where we silence young women and we, speaking of silence, young women, two of my girlfriends um, posted in um, basically and saying that, hey, um, this is wrong. And you're inciting people to go against these girl, this girl who's gotten a great opportunity. And the news, news place that they... Um, that this was posted said um, basically deleted all their comments and there was a whole hoopla with the organizer or the founder and the young women who responded you know so there was also that silencing of like women so there is this uproar about this young girl going to this university there is also the silencing of the women who are speaking out against um, creating this controversy that shouldn't even exist. Like it's not a controversy. A girl got a scholarship to attend a university and we're happy for her and that's Somali excellence and we're very excited and that should be end of story, right? But the post was purposely insightful. And when I read the comments, it was very disheartening, you know? And it implies that Women don't have their own intellect to choose what they will do or not do. It implies that women are susceptible, easily manipulated. And I was offended as a woman. I was very offended as a woman, you know? So no, shout out to Zainab anyways, Zainab Habon, who's in the house. Thank you for being here, Abaya, who said no. She said, no, you are not going to get away with that. You're not going to be insightful and try to ruin this glorious moment for this young woman who we are so proud of. Rahma, we are so proud of you. You know, and we're all going to like, you know, be so proud of you too when you graduate. And you are a success story for us, you know. So I was very upset with that. And I thought to myself, we need to do better. We need to definitely do better. And, you know, we need to uplift our young women and men, uplift our young people so they can be all that they can be. You know, we need to uplift them. Um, let us see. Finally, this made me chuckle a lot. <laughs> oh, this made me chuckle. Okay. So Singapore. <laughs> Singapore enlists robo dogs to enforce social distancing in public park. 
you are in violation, you are in violation, you are too close to each other, move, move, move. I can already envision that, like I can already see that, you know, beep, 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 this is not six feet, beep, beep, beep. And I thought to myself, oh my God, like, is this an episode of Black Mirror? Have you guys watched Black Mirror? Black Mirror, if you haven't watched it, like I implore you, seriously watch it. You will be blown away, one, and then you will be underwhelmed because what? We are living it right now. We're living it right now, you know? At first I was like so blown away and then now I'm like, wow, I really thought that was fiction. I really thought that was fiction, but is it fiction? I don't know, because we're living through some dire times. We really are. Imagine just a robot coming up to you and just telling you to move away from one another because you are violating social distancing. Um, here in Ohio, <laughs> we're slowly opening back up, um, which is very interesting, right? Some places have extended it for three more months, right? So. I've heard a county in Los Angeles is not going to open until like July, but we're gonna have restaurants here open soon. And you know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I am on the fence about things opening up. You know, there's a part of me that has a desire for quote unquote no normality, but then there's a part of me that's like, is it worth it? I don't know if it's worth it. So I'm just gonna stay inside um until the coast is clear yeah that's that's what i'm going to do anyways we have reached the end all right so if you have any suggestions if you have any comments questions if there's anything particular that you would like to cover if there's something that you really want me to discuss on next week's weekly seven holler at the email there with going seven show at gmail.com be nice follow proper email email etiquette such as hello if i gone or hello miss gone say what you need to say and then sign off saying best you know what i'm very particular about that because you know i'm a teacher and i tell my students to like hey when you're emailing people read them state your business using correct grammar and punctuation rules and then sign off using your name you know, and be polite because you get more bees with honey than vinegar. Anyways, um, it's been great, guys. Thank you very much for those of you who are here. I really appreciate it. Yes, Abdul, definitely situation, Kenna. Absolutely. Thank you, Abdul, by the way, for being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Habon, Ahmed. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm going to sign off. And good to see you guys again. See you next week. Bye now.